Hey, how's it going? Well, some people have asked me, or have said to me, you know, uh, well, GIMP isn't bad, uh, you know, how can you say that GIMP is so bad? No, GIMP is bad. Okay, GIMP sucks. GIMP acts like a program made in 1998 with a few things thrown on top of it. Some, some programs, some open source programs act like something from maybe 2002. Um, there are also exceptions to this too. Uh, open broadcaster software, you know, they keep up with that. Open broadcaster software is halfway decent. It is. Um, Audacity is is halfway decent uh, for for basic functions anyway. Um, it's still kind of legacy. The way that they have you do things is a little antiquated, but you can get things done without taking too many steps. GIMP, on the other hand. No. Now, right here, we're looking at Photoshop's Gradient Editor. Okay, I'm a big fan of it. Um, you know, if you have these two points, um, you know, black and white, and you have a gradient between, um, you know, the color that you've actually selected, is that is the point in the timeline of the, the timeline, whatever you want to call it, uh, that is the point in the gradient in which that color actually is. It might sound weird uh, for a moment, but uh, you'll know why I've said that shortly. And if I want to add another color to it, I just click, choose a color, and bam, there's another color added to the gradient. And as you can see too, when I move this around, it moves these little uh, center points around as well based on the percentage that I had that set for. So if I bring these both in way in like this, whoops. If I bring these both in way like way in like this, oh yeah, that's another thing, you know, if I if I add another color to this gradient accidentally, I can go, oh shit, delete, and I'm back to where I was. Can't do that on GIMP. Um, not without ruining, completely ruining the gradient. It, it it's 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 brutal. And then sometimes you just have to start all over again. So, you know, I can move these around, and that part's easy. So let's go to GIMP, okay? Here, I mean, you can see here's that center point, but you can't move this around. You can't move this around. In order to do that, you would have to add... Like, if you want that black to be extended, then you have to create a point on here like this, you know, to do that. And when you move this around, it, it, here's the thing, okay? It's the edge of this segment of the gradient that's black and you know, the right edge of this segment and the left edge of this segment. Um, so if I was to change... the right edge of this segment here, right endpoints color, and I change this. As you can see, in order for this to match here, I have to go here and say, uh, load left color from left neighbor's uh, right endpoint, okay? Everything is has to do with the edges. It has to do with this side, that side, this side, that side. And if I move this around, as you can see, the uh, these don't move automatically. Now, Granted, there could be some advantages to this. You might want it to be like this. You might want this to stay in that, that spot. And, and, you know, do you want the toilet paper on the top? The, does the toilet paper come from the top or does it come from the bottom, right? So, uh, but here I can go, I can say recenter segments uh, midpoint. So if I have this here and I and I wanted to have this perfectly centered, recenter the midpoint, midpoint, and there it is. So now let's go into uh, opacity. On Photoshop, this bottom half of this are the colors. The top half is the opaque level. So I can create this point that says, yeah, right now it says eighty-seven. Uh, uh, Opacity. I'm gonna I'm gonna take these and move these in, right? And I can take this this uh, semi-transparent part and move it across any part of the gradient, any part of it. 
And if I didn't like it, well, I can just go like this. Right? Let's go to GIMP. Now, here, here's, here's where GIMP just, just becomes fucking horrible. All right. So, you can't really... You'll never be able to place this exactly where you want it. But if you look over here at this box, this is the color that if when I click and hold and move back and forth, you can see this turn light and dark. So if I wanted this color right here, I can then take this, drag it to here, and it's still different. As you saw how it changed the gradient here, it's still different. And there's nothing I can do to make it the same. But uh, now I need to create another one. One more. Let's insert one more. And so this section, I want this to be transparent. So I'm going to go... Um, first, I'm going to go... Uh, load left color from this and I'm going to say load right color from this then I'm going to go left endpoints color I'm going to turn that down to be uh, completely uh, transparent and uh, I guess I could just do the same here I could also just load the left from the right but here we go okay and now I have to, <laughs> now I have to right click and say split segment at midpoint. Now we have more segments, right? And now to get this to fade to that color, I have to go load, uh, no, no, load right color from this, click on this segment, load left color from this. And now we have the same thing that I have in Photoshop, but I can't just move this around. Where I've chosen to put this is where it has to be. You have to meticulously plan it out. And if you get it wrong, well, there, you're screwed. You know, we will never get the same thing that we had before. Or I've, I've never gotten it before. I, let's say delete segment and delete segment. No. Okay. See why, see, why did it leave this? Well, because left side, right side, left side, right side. Let's delete segment and what do you know? What do you know? It's still it, totally not right. You know, we've got these two segments. There is no way to get this to go back to being black and white. You can never go back. Once you do something on this, it's permanent. So if I, if I right-click this and say delete segment, it's going to probably create, it'll probably make this color all the way to the right, or it will make this color all the way to the left. Let's see which it does. There it is. There is no way out of that. There's no way out of it. You make a mistake, and you either start from the beginning or you start from a point that's messed up. That is how GIMP's gradient system works. It's fucking terrible. Um, it's a lot of work you've got to put into something just to create a gradient. I one time worked in GIMP for two hours and was still not able to have the gradient I wanted. And I ended up giving up and went to Pixlr. This was... This was when I had switched to Windows 8 and... Um, CS6, um, which uh, oddly enough, uh, Photoshop CS6, the, under a strange stipulation, you can kind of get CS6 for free. But CS6 is kind of buggy. But CS6 was not cooperating with Windows 8. So I was trying alternatives. And I remember just after two hours, I was wanting to throw the computer through a window. And so I switched to, I tried Pixlr. P-I-X-L-R. And they have something that's... It's, it's a lot more similar to Photoshop. But they still don't go have quite as many options. But it's, it's, it's decent. So, yeah. 
you know, what you just watched is is why I can't stand uh, GIMP. Uh, it, it, I mean, one of the reasons. There are so many things about GIMP that are this way. You just, you want to do something, you think it's going to be simple, and they found some way to make it complex. Simple things are complex. You don't get to see a visual of, of a lot of things. No, no, go to a menu, and you have to know ahead of time. It's, it's, it's the same mentality you find behind programs that use a CLI. You know, you, you have to have read the manual first to know what the commands are. You have to have planned stuff out. There is no experimenting. Plan it out, plan it out, plan it out. And that's not how I do things. Um, I struggle with music programs that want you to do the same thing. I'd like to be able to be creative. And programs that let you be creative are great. GIMP is not one of those programs because GIMP is an open source program and that's how open source usually works. doesn't matter how terrible something is. Uh, uh, well, if it works, then it works and it, it's not broke, so don't fix it. And it's free. It's free. Free, everyone. Free. Okay, fine. It's free. Congratulations. So... I, for one, am glad that Adobe has the thing that you can pay a monthly fee to use their software because otherwise I would never be able to afford using Adobe software, not legally. So, And I used to not. I, I For years and years and years, I used pirated versions of Adobe software. And it's nice to be using the real version now. So...